Okay, everybody, this is Emar Soper 2. Welcome to another edition of the original Free Kick, where we're going to recap Atlanta United's match against Miami that took place on September 29th. We're recording this on September 30th. And as always, to follow everything that we do, head to the mothership to sportsinquire.net. Premier Siphon News and Notes in the world of sports. You can also go to our social media platforms on Twi Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the Sports Inquirer. And finally, subscribe to us on our audio and video hosts such as SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iTunes under Sports Inquirer. Atlanta snapped its, well, it wasn't a losing streak, but they rebounded from their loss at Philadelphia last weekend with a 1-0 home victory over Inter-Miami CF on september 29th joseph martinez scored the game's deciding goal with a penalty kick which we'll get to in a moment but it was his 100th goal for atlanta united across all competitions he became the fastest player in mls history to reach the century mark accomplishing the contest um, defeat in just 125 matches here is atlanta united manager gonzalo pineda on the importance of martinez in the lineup. It's a tricky question though, because I feel like, yes, Joseph is massively important for how we play, not just what he can produce uh, as a footballer, but also as a leader, as someone that people rely on taking the balls in uh, the ball in tough areas and, and, and yelling at his teammates and show a little bit how we need to attack. So I would say it's very important, but uh, I would like to say that even when Joseph is out of in international, when Joseph is out of the lineup, I would like also the team to win. And I prepare the team, no matter who's in, who's out, to win. So in some senses, yes, it's very important, but uh, I would prefer if no matter who's on the field, we, we still have a solid performance. And with that victory, Atlanta moved above the playoff line heading into this weekend. Here is Brad Guzan, goalkeeper and captain of Atlanta United, on the victory. And remember, we played this clip on the previous show about the importance of this contest. And you can hear, hear the frustration in Brad Guzan about the team's loss to Philadelphia and the lack of effort. Here he is on the victory over Miami and addressing those previous comments. Yeah, I mean, obviously the result helps, right? But I think, uh, and the manager probably touched on it a little bit in terms of the performance, and it wasn't pretty at times. The first half we had to, we had to weather some storms, um, obviously make some changes at halftime, and, and then the second half, um, I, I don't think they really had any any real sniff at goal. Um, and so that was, that was pleasing to see in terms of our adjustments, but also our, our commitment, our attitude, um, you know, obviously, listen, everyone's going to talk about Joe's 100th goal. But if you remember, there was a play. They had a throw in down by our corner flag. The ball bounces around this or that. He comes and defends at the top of the box off the corner to, to my left-hand side. Um, ends up winning the ball, plays the ball forward, I think, or gets fought, whatever it is. But, like, that's a, for me, that is a massive moment in the game. Um, and that shows the type of commitment that not only he had, but – but everybody had in terms of understanding what this game was about, understanding it didn't matter how we got it done. We just had to come away with three points, and we did that. Man, yeah, so it was a good win for Atlanta United. A slow start in this contest for both teams. It was a scoreless first half, uh, but Atlanta was ultimately able to get the goal in the second half to earn the victory. Uh, before we get to some specifics, here is Guzan on the second half adjustments the team made to just play better and to get the victory. Yeah, like I said, those they were fantastic. You know, I thought in the first half we didn't do a good enough job of getting close to them. And you saw that in the transition moments when when Iguain dropped in, got the ball, was able to turn, play, you know, play Morgan, play Robinson, play Pizarro, um, even even uh, Kieran Gibbs out on the left-hand side. And now they're running at us with numbers. And so at halftime, we talked about getting closer to those guys, getting closer so that when the ball pops out from in and around their own box, that they don't have time to turn and pick their head up and find a pass. And and like I said, I, I think the second half, you know, we were we were much better in terms of keeping the, the press on and, and, and locking them in their own half and stepping in and winning balls and, and being able to continue the attack. You know, and the change for Atlanta was also in the second half, they made some substitutions. They replaced J Anton Walks with Jake Moraney, and Marceline Moreno was subbed out of the contest for Matias Rosetto. 
Uh, but just uh, Walks was doing okay. Defensively, the team was, was stout. But offensively, just they weren't you know, not creating many chances. So Moreno, who's had a really solid season for Atlanta United, he was subbed out for uh, Matias Rosetto, and that seemed to change the fortunes of the formation and the flow of the contest for Atlanta. Here is Pineda on Moreno uh, and his effort in the contest. Assessing individual performances, you have to take that in context of the game. So in the context of the game, I probably put um, Marcelino reflecting on, on maybe I put him in a bad position because he had to start the sequences from a deeper position. And obviously, uh, he was trying to do more on the attacking half. At times, that disorganized a little bit the team because he was in higher positions. And then Barco and Luis Araujo were not receiving the ball in those spaces. So I had to make an adjustment just based on I needed a more solid pair of center mids to attract the opposition and then create a space for Luis Araujo and Barco. It wasn't like I feel like Marcelino played poorly. He played normal Marcelino, but tactically I needed a, more of a second center mid. Uh, and then if I was pleased with Araujo, again, the same. It was a tough position for him because uh, he couldn't find really the pockets of the space that I always want to. But I felt that he was in tune in the game. He was trying. He was trying very hard. He was tracking back, which I like. So I'm happy with him in, in the effort line. And I know the football and the connections is going to come with time. I told you he's still adapting a little bit to the league, knowing different type of players uh, and, and playing with his teammates. So I'm sure Araujo is progressing well. I'm happy with his progression. And, and hopefully he can impact the game in the offensive side a bit more the next game. Yeah, and when Rosetto in the contest, you saw a little bit better offense from Atlanta pushing forward more. And Atlanta was awarded a penalty in the 76th minute when George Bello attempted the cross from the left side of the penalty area. And the ball hit Leandro Gonzalez uh, with uh, Perez, LGP, the former Atlanta United stalwart uh, defender. He was called with the handball. Really tough call there. I don't... You obviously, when you see handballs, sometimes the guys they put their hands out there, and it's pretty blatant what they were trying to do. I think with the with Leandro, he was defending. He was, you know, in the vicinity of the ball, and it did hit his arm. I don't think he was going for the ball, but the rule of the land or the, the rule of the law is if you if the ball hits your hand in that area and uh, it just the way his body was positioned, that's a handball. It was more of an elbow ball than anything, but the call was made. I'm surprised they didn't review it more extensively uh, with a VAR and things along those lines, but the referee made the call. It stood, and Martinez went to the penalty area and hit a shot to the lower right side of goal past Miami goalkeeper uh, Nick Marksman. Marsman, and that made the score win nil, and that was the only goal of the contest. And with that goal, as I mentioned, Martinez, he now has 100 goals in all competitions for Atlanta, 16th player in MLS history to reach that mark. Uh, and he's just the fifth player to do that with one club. Dignitaries such as Taylor Twelman with New England, uh, Valeri with Portland, are some of the other guys who were able to accomplish that. Here is Joseph Martinez on scoring. His 100th goal. Happy, yes, for sure. Um, also, I worry about the game because this is an amazing game today. But we won. That's is important. And also, I'm happy because now every day you make 100 goals. So um, I want to say thank you for uh, my teammates that, that are here. And, uh, and the players that, I, that was here before, and uh, everyone working in Atlanta United, yeah, also for my city because they made me a lot. Yeah, and he was very happy with it, and it was a got the result as he mentioned. You know, those were, that was very important. But you look at the statistics of this contest. Atlanta played a little bit better than they did with Philadelphia. I mean, the most important thing is obviously you got the result, you got the victory. But Atlanta got to more of its traditional ways. They Outshot, outshot uh, Miami 19-7, to led in shots on target 7-0. I didn't realize until looking at that stat now, not one shot in goal for Atlanta or for Miami in the contest against Atlanta. 
You know, so that was just a very big defensive effort for the five stripes. They let in corner kicks, eight to four possession. Remember, in the Philadelphia contest last week, they Atlanta only led in possession 51% to 49%. This was more of the style that Atlanta likes to play when they what they did against Miami. They had possession percentage of 62%. Uh, so that was when they possessed the ball, were able to control the, the pace of play for the most part. And passing accuracy was a 90% for Atlanta. Uh, but yeah, but they got that lone goal by Martinez uh, with the penalty kick. But still, but Pineda was asked about the lack of goals and lack of offensive production in the contest. And here were his thoughts. Based on, on the stats that we have, we have uh, expected goals of 2.71 against 0.76. So I felt that, yes, we created uh, enough chances to probably impact the game earlier. But the games are like that. And I think Miami did a very good job. He was very solid. I was impressed with their buildup from goal kicks. He, he did a very good job in the first couple minutes. They surprised us a little bit. And then their transitions were very difficult. When, when, when Higuain was dropping in between the lines, he was causing us problems. And so it wasn't an easy game to play. But uh, the part that I liked was when they were in a solid lower block, we were able to unlock certain things based on good possession and movement of the ball, especially, as you said, in the second half. A couple transitions were also a good way to, to impact, but uh, probably it was destiny that it had to be Joseph with a penalty to score his 100th goal and then, and then help us to win as a team. Yeah, so the biggest thing is Atlanta got the victory. They are now in the playoffs. They're above the playoff line. Let's pull up the statistics right now. So right now, Atlanta sits tied for sixth. or well, yeah, tied for fourth, actually, with three other teams, New York City, FC, Philadelphia, and Orlando. All four of those teams, ranked four through seven, have 39 points. If you look at some goal differentials and some other tiebreakers, Atlanta technically is in sixth place. They're only one spot out of fourth, which is one one spot out of third, which is held by DC United. They have 40 points. So Atlanta, once again, with that victory, moved into the playoff spot. The top seven teams make it into the postseason. And the top four teams get to host that first round playoff matchup. So they're only one point away from hosting a first round match. Nashville has 46 points. They're currently in second place if for frame of reference. And then D New England, 65 points. They are in first place and they've already clinched the playoff spot and they're the runaway winner for the supporter shield. So that's a New England's having a uh, incredible year uh, for that squad. Uh, actually, I say they're rec yeah, see, yeah, they have 65 points. Yeah, and Seattle is the team with the best record in the West. 51 points. So they're 14 points above anybody else in Major League Soccer for that supporter shield. But Atlanta does get back to action on set on uh, October 1st. Actually, it's October 2nd. Yes, October 2nd on Saturday. They're going to face Montreal. Montreal currently sits in eighth place at 37 points just outside of the playoff line or playoff picture. So Atlanta is there in the midst of a really important stretch of contest here. And we will hopefully be attending practice tomorrow and getting you a preview of that Montreal contest. Make sure you go to the inquire.net. You also go to our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then finally, you go to our audio and video host, such as YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and others. Until next time, good fight, good night, and be safe.